us uh, the numbers were quite good this time around the AUMs grew by almost about 50 percent the disbursement growth was 32 percent and the net interest margins for the company have also improved this has been a very strong listing and it has shown through in its earnings as well so good numbers coming in for Q1 of FY17 also uh, there's a very strong improvement that we've seen in the return ratios for Equitas so uh, the stock is holding up as you can see up almost about two and a half odd percent P N Vasudeva the MD of Equitas Holdings uh, joins us now to talk more about the numbers. Mr. Vasudevan, good morning and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers coming in. Can you start by telling us what the disbursement growth could look like for the rest of the year? This quarter was very healthy, up 32%. How are the trends looking for the year as a whole? Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the, the quarter was uh, reasonable from our perspective. Uh, the disbursement, as you mentioned, was uh, about 32 percent up. Uh, during the quarter, actually, uh, you know, microfinance, we did have a slowdown in microfinance because we had elections in Tamil Nadu during the quarter. And, uh, you know, there's not much of disbursement during the quarter because of that. And a lot of heat wave in different states. So that also did impact. Uh, going forward, maybe that would uh, slightly ease up and that could improve the disbursements a bit on microfinance. Uh, but our other businesses have done well, uh, uh, vehicle finance as well as uh, micro and small enterprise uh, MSC business. They have done well. Uh, going forward, uh, you know, as we uh, we don't generally give guidance, uh, but the markets where we operate, the demand continues to be very large. The unmet demand continues to be very large. There's not enough supply of, uh, you know, formal financial uh, services in these segments. And so the ability to grow will, con will really be determined more on our capability to manage the growth and capability to manage our portfolio quality than so much from a market or potential side. Uh, uh, Mr. Vasudevan, good morning. How much comes from MFI and how much comes from non-MFI lending? Uh, microfinance is about 52 percent of the overall book. The balance comes from the others. Vehicles are around 25 percent. Uh, MSC finance is around 20 percent and uh, housing finance is about 4 percent. Uh, microfinance is, uh, as I mentioned, about 52 percent. Mm -hmm. Going forward, as we become a bank this quarter, we really hope to convert into a bank in this quarter. Uh, we did get the final license from RBI some time back, about a month back. Uh, we are bank number 119 as per the RBI license. We are bank number 119 in okay. India. Uh, we did get the license and we have now applied for a few more approvals which are required. And if those come in place uh, as, as expected, then 5th September, which is Ganesh Chaturthi, is when we really hope to launch the bank. And uh, once we launch the bank, there will be a couple of new loan products that we will be introducing. One is uh, Agri Gold Loan, uh, mainly meant for the rural and semi-urban uh, markets. And second will be a business loan, which will be for the commercial establishments in and out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've got some technical problem with uh, Mr. Vasudevan. We will try and get uh, uh, back to him in a jiffy. Uh, the important question really is what is their strategy after they become a bank because at that time there will be the usual CRR, SLR requirements but more mm -hmm. importantly they will be able to collect deposits. They will not have to depend on only bank lending and capital uh, and such other wholesale finances. They can uh, of course uh, uh, raise their own deposits. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Vasudevan, I believe you can hear me now. Uh, can you tell us your plan fr starting September 5th? Uh, how are you going to grow your liability franchise, your deposits? What uh, numbers can you give us in terms of targets that you have? See, currently we are <coughs> out of our total borrowings, about 70% is from banks, which uh, really translate to about 3,000 crores. Uh, so there is a certain level of securitization that we will be doing uh, this month and next month. Uh, maybe to the extent of about seven, eight hundred crores, we will be doing securitization. Uh, we are also in touch with refinancing institutions like Sidbi, Nabad, and Mutra. Uh, where you know the refinance from these institutions uh, do not uh, require SLR, CRR to be also maintained once you become a bank. So we are in touch with these institutions to see what we can do proactively in terms of uh, shoring up uh, the revenues, the 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 borrowings, and uh, the the last piece will be of course uh, CDs and CPs which we can place in the markets. Uh, we have a highest uh, rating from Crystal for uh, short term uh, debt. 
uh, which is A1 plus. So we hope that with that uh, with that rating, we should be able to place out CPs and CDs in the uh, in the market and raise some amount of money on that. Mm -hmm. uh, IBPC will be another source of funding for the bank. Once we become a bank, IBPC will also open up in terms of our ability to you know sell uh, down sell private sector loans mm -hmm. to other banks who may be in need of it. As you know, you know almost like 100 percent of our loans today is private sector loans, yes. and uh, so there could be a lot of demand for that as we become a bank. So IBPCs could be one more source of uh, funding for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really expect that you know multiple sources are available, so we should be able to be fairly comfortable in terms of. No, I guess source of money bank. was not your problem. And the uh, problem the other will point be. Is that uh, Mr. Vasudevan, you will have to keep uh, uh, CRR and SLR as well and getting deposits in the initial months may be difficult. Do you expect your NIMS to be under pressure? Your net interest margins actually moved up. Uh, uh, by the end of the year, can they move down? Yeah, there could be some pressure on NIM and ROA. Uh, see, currently our cost of funds is around 12 percent from the banks. Now, as we become a bank ourselves, we expect that immediately at phase one level, uh, we expect the overall cost of funds to come to around 9 percent to 9.5 percent. That's where we expect it to land. So, which means that we should save about 2, 2.5 percent uh, plus on our cost of funds. So, that is one factor which could benefit the bank as we become a bank. Uh, the negative part of it, of course, will be the 26, 27 percent we'll have to keep in SLRC which will probably yield a consolidated uh, yield of around 6% uh, or something like that because CRR doesn't fetch anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so net of both of this, yes, there could be some impact on both uh, NIM and ROA. Uh, how much is it will really depend on how effectively we are able to squeeze our cost of funds as we become a bank. Okay, just one final question then. What could the annualized growth rate be for the microfinance business over the next say two to three years? And also I was going through your uh, presentation where you say that although there is a lot of demand, pockets of glut of MFIs and resultant over leveraging by clients remains a concern. Uh, how much do you think that could impact the growth? See, in microfinance, we continue to be cautious. Um, see, 70%, the eight SFBs who have got a license and Bandhan Bank, which just became a bank recently, this nine of us actually constitute about 70% of the microfinance market. And there's an RBA rule that uh, one, not more than two MFIs can give a loan to one customer. That's mm. what that came in 2011. Mm. And that combined with a very strong credit bureau database really ensured that this industry has been very stable over the last few years. Mm. But now suddenly in, in a six months time, frame, you are going to see 70% of the market becoming a bank from an MFI. Mm -hmm. And when they become a bank, the two MFI norm doesn't apply to those banks. Uh, so effectively what, what could happen is that in the 70% of the market which is currently being serviced, uh, it is possible that two, three banks might lend to the same customer and two MFIs can also lend to the same customer, mm -hmm. which means from overall two borrowing, suddenly she may end up borrowing three, four or five. And that is what we are definitely worried about. That's a cause of concern for us definitely. There's a lot of industry level discussion going on mm. to see how we can uh, kind of change our code of conduct to address this new risk which is coming into the market. But till that time that it is really properly and effectively addressed, it's an area of concern and uh, from MFI perspective, we'll continue to be you know, quite cautious in our growth. Mm. Uh, you know, our own uh, repeat business is probably the lowest in the industry. You know, our first cycle to second cycle is about 45% okay. and second cycle loan to third cycle loan is even lower at about 30% because we see that they have borrowed from some banks. After they have taken a loan from us, they also ended up borrowing from some banks. Okay. And so we internally say that if you have borrowed from bank or MFI, I will regard of them as a loan yeah. and so I don't give a loan so my repeat business has been very low probably mm -hmm. the lowest in the industry okay. but I think that caution is something that we can't give up. Well that's very good to hear Mr. Vasudevan thank you very much for joining and, us. Uh, one yeah. more thing is that uh, uh, yeah uh, Mr. Vasudevan we're actually out of time thank you very much for joining us uh, with your thoughts it's good to hear that the MFI industry uh, well now a bank uh, now slipping into banking is uh, extremely cautious about double lending and uh, multiple lending to the same borrower. We know the kind of crisis it caused uh, in past months. We'll take a very quick break and thereafter we are going to be joined by Kapil Agarwal.